Pixies, welcome, welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna be doing a little just chatty, relaxing get ready with me. Just wanted to like check in with you, Pixies, and do our makeup. But in the meantime, I wanna actually put on some perfume, you know, treat ourselves, make ourselves feel very just luxurious before we get into this. So which leads me to today's today's collaboration. I'm actually in collaboration today with the brand Dossier. I've worked with them before and I love Dossier perfumes. I actually reproduced high quality, luxurious brand scents at a fraction of the price, which is really, really cool. So they keep the exact same high quality by cutting all the expenses in the infamous brand tax. Every bottle even comes with this little sample size so you can test it before you have to commit to it, which is really cool. I really love the affordability of these perfumes for being as high quality as they are. They're either $29 or $39, depending on just like kind of the ingredients that are in them. While designer scents, you know, they range from like $50 to like $250, so it's a steal. They have pre-returns and exchanges forever. They receive excellent feedback on the similarity of the scents. They have great bulk deals on their website, up to 25% off discount code and free shipping for three bottles. And they're adding new scents to their collections all the time and are thrilled to take suggestions from customers for future releases. They're super high quality. They're vegan, cruelty-free. I also really do love their packaging. It's, um, you know, it's an all, all recyclable, which is really awesome to see. So I got the scents Floral Musk and Oriental Cherry. I love both of these scents so, so much. Today, I think I'm gonna use Floral Musk. I love like a good musky smell and this one's just very like clean smelling and yeah. Mm, oh my God. This is my my new favorite scent. Make sure you go to the link below um, in the description to use GG10 and use my code GG10 for 10% off your order. Okay, skincare first. Always the key to good makeup I have found is skincare. I used to like literally not put on skincare before I put my makeup on. I just slap makeup straight on my face and I have learned that is not the way to do it. You guys actually asked me a bunch of questions on my Instagram, which by the way is ggmw if you wanna follow. But I'm gonna answer those questions. Do a little Q and A. Okay, first question, which I think is very nice. How are you? Um, <laughs> you know, I'm okay. Thank you for asking, first of all. Honestly, I'm doing pretty good. You guys know I'm long distance with my boyfriend and he visited me for about a month. So when he left, I definitely went through a little bit of a sad spell. Um, I kind of just stayed in my room all the time and like, it was really sad. I mean, it was like one of those weeks where you just, you don't want to do anything. I had a really hard time filming and just really sad. It's really hard being long distance. Obviously, like, it's still sad. Valentine's Day was kind of sad too. But overall, like, I'm getting, I'm getting better. Now I'm kind of in more of a place where I'm just really trying to convert that energy into useful energy. So instead of just being like sad, I'm trying to, you know, do things like, I started doing yoga, which has been really fun. I've been working out more. And honestly, like, that too is just something that Whenever I go through those spells of just being really sad and down is something that helps me so much is just finding like activities and active activities, things that make me move my body because releases endorphins and that really, really helps me. I like did a big reorganization of my room, move my bed around, like stuff like that just really pulls me out of a slump. Organizing, cleaning, literally. I bought a nail kit. I'm gonna try and do my nails soon. I think that's also just my biggest tip. If you guys are ever just feeling down, try and just find things that can bring you some joy throughout your day. You know, you don't have to be super woman or superman or whatever and do everything and be good at everything, but it's fun to like take up little hobbies, even if it's literally like learning how to crochet, like stuff like that. Just like experimenting with and having like some fun, I think it's so helpful. But overall I've been, I've been pretty good. And it's been, I think I've really been taking charge of like my health and stuff recently. I've been really trying to work out and do my yoga and eat better, which has been really exciting. And I definitely am starting to like feel a difference in my body. This person said, how do I feel secure in myself? And a couple other people also asked about like insecurities and body image and all that. So definitely do want to talk about that.
So I actually have been thinking about this a lot recently. I feel like for the most part, I was super like super skinny in high school. Just, it wasn't like anything I did. It was literally just genetics and I had a fast metabolism and I, I danced every single day. So like, I just was built like that. It wasn't, it wasn't anything I did. Like I could eat a ton and I was just really, really petite. That being said, when I used to go to a very toxic ballet studio, I was bigger than the other girls because I had curves. Like I was very petite, but I did have curves. My ballet teacher would, you know, make comments about how she could see my lunch and stuff like that. And just very rude comments that you should not be saying to a 13 year old girl. But it's actually very common, I think, for dance teachers. Why, who embodied dance teachers to say the rudest, most out of pocket, ridiculous, like immature, unprofessional, disgusting things to their dancers. Like honestly, if a dance teacher says that to you, don't take it from them. If I could go back, I would be like, don't talk to me like that. Like don't, or I'm leaving your class if you talk to me like that because that's not okay. It's really just not, I don't know. Like, and it's just so accepted. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. So, but basically I didn't really have many body issues besides in my dance classes. In, but once I kind of like got out of that dance, world, I really like felt pretty secure in my body throughout high school. So first year college hits and I gained like a good amount of weight like my first year. My first time, you know, being away from my parents, like no one was telling me what I could and couldn't eat and it just really, it caught up with me. So that was really, really hard for me though, like to see my body change so drastically and I really beat myself up for it because it was confusing to me. It was scary and just like, now, you know, I work out a lot more than I did my first year of college. I work out pretty consistently, but I still like, my body has just changed since I was in high school and which is okay. Like bodies change and my body has grown. Like my hips are bigger because I'm older and my body just looks different. Not just because like, oh, I stopped working out and stuff, but because I'm just growing and I'm older and I'm not a 15 year old girl. This is weird to talk about because I literally like don't really talk about it and it's kind of my first time voicing all this out loud, really. I think also starting YouTube and editing a video of myself every single week, looking at my face in detail, looking at my body on the screen in detail has been really odd and it's really hard to like see myself in the mirror you know, be thinking I look, I feel like I look really good in this outfit or whatever, but then I look at the footage back and I'm just like, that's what my body looked like. Like, and I've had moments this year where it's really gotten me down and I've cried and I've been really upset and I've been like, why is my body changing like this? What did I do? What am I doing wrong? I feel like I'm eating healthy. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that I have it figure it out because I don't. It's definitely something that I've been really dealing with recently and trying to just, you know, look at myself in the mirror and be okay with being a little bit bigger than I used to be. I learned to be secure with myself in so many of my other insecurities. Like I used to straighten my hair every day. Now I love my curly hair. I used to hate my nose. I used to Photoshop my nose to be smaller. Now I love my nose. Those things took time. Like I used to hate being 4'11 and now it's like, I talk about it all the time. I'm like, I'm so short and it's like my character trait and I love it and I think I'm adorable. And with those things, it took time, but it took just kind of like, the biggest thing that I've been able to do to accept the things that I don't like about myself is to A, literally just look at myself in the mirror and pretend I like it and just be like, you know, this is what makes me unique. This is like cool that I look like this. And even if I don't believe it, I'm just gonna tell myself I do. And eventually it just became true. Another thing I did was to look up pictures of people who had the things that I was insecure about, but on them I thought they were so beautiful. And to be able to see someone that looks like you and be like, wow, they're so beautiful. Like if I think their features are beautiful and I have the same features, like why, what am I missing here? You know, growing up in the age of like social media and stuff, it's hard to not just look at people and feel upset. 
I think it's also really important to follow people who don't promote like things that make you feel like, more insecure about yourself, if that makes sense. First of all, just follow people who have good values and like who you feel are like good people, give good people platforms, but also like for me personally, like it's damaging to follow someone who promotes calorie counting. Maybe for you it's not, but for me personally it is. And following people who, you know, show their days where they're really bloated or, you know, show the imperfections. That's really healthy for me to look at and to be like, I'm normal, like I'm beautiful, they're beautiful. These things that I'm insecure about myself are normal human things. I, I would just like be careful about who you follow. Are you in college? If do you, if not, do you plan on going soon? Yes, I actually am in college. <laughs> um, I'm part time this semester, which has been really helpful. I've been able to like focus on this a little bit more and and do things like work out and do yoga because before it was just it was just too much for me and like I was just drowning in the amount of work I had and I was sad because I felt like I couldn't put as much energy into this as I wanted and if I was putting energy into this I felt like I couldn't do things like work out in the morning because I didn't have time so it's been really helpful um I'm a film student I'm trying to figure out like what I would want to do in film I do feel like I could see myself doing costumes and set because I do love styling things so much and like the idea of styling characters like phew, that's so exciting to me so we'll see how do you feel about your channel growing congrats on 50k by the way I love you so much I love you too thank you so much I am so excited about this channel growing you guys literally are like the best part about my week I love making videos so much and I'm so excited that our little family is growing so yeah I'm excited to see what comes I'm working on merch I want to make sustainable merch though like I, I want to use shirts that are like at least like some sort of eco-friendly um but I'm having a hard time finding a company that doesn't just carry like white and black like I kind of want green and brown and pink so anyway <laughs> how do we confident with itty bitty titties girl <laughs> This has also been a big journey of mine because I have very, very, very small itty bitties. And I used to be so self-conscious about it. Like in middle school, I literally would do research about how you could grow your boobs. Should we do green? Or am I getting too crazy? Oh my God. But like, look, I literally used to, I got, I bought myself papaya pills because I read somewhere that it grows your boobs. I would drink soy milk, which is a myth by the way, that it gives you extra estrogen. That's like a myth. I think I used to wear push-up bras all the time and like, honestly, you do you. If that makes you feel confident, cool. But for me, eventually, I was just like, these are so uncomfortable. And I think that was like kind of the turning point for me was when I realized how uncomfortable it was to wear push-up bras every day. I'm a very sensory oriented person. So if something makes me feel if I feel uncomfortable sensory wise, I I like can't deal. I can only wear certain materials, otherwise I feel like I literally have to rip clothing off my body. It feels like fingernails on a chalkboard. Okay, I had to move a little bit because of the light. Um, I also did that thing where I realized that there are a lot of beautiful women with smaller chests. I think there's so much power in that. It's definitely something that has really, really helped me. The sensory thing like also really helped me because I was just like, okay, I'm literally so uncomfortable, like I can't do this. So I kind of had to accept it because I wasn't gonna be stuffing my bra every day because it was uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, this might sound crazy, but another thing that I feel like helps is also just trying to separate yourself from viewing yourself from the male gaze, if that makes sense, or the tabloid gaze, or like the media's gaze, like, because we're all programmed to look. We're all programmed to think of beauty as this one dimensional certain look. And that look changes all the time, but like we're all programmed to think of it that way. So it can, if you don't look like that one conventional way of beauty, it can be really hard on your self esteem. So trying to separate yourself from that thing that you've been programmed to think, or from looking at yourself by thinking, oh, well, like, I'm not attractive because I don't have these desirable features for men or stuff like that, like, whatever it is. I think that is super helpful. And looking at it more like, looking at yourself more is just like art. Like, honestly, 
you look at yourself as like part of an art museum or thinking of them as just like these beautiful artistic things because that's what you are like you are art like our bodies are incredible our, the fact that our, your body is living breathing carrying you through this world that's incredible and like thinking of yourself more like that is like looking your body in the mirror and saying this is the vessel that carries my myself through this world and that's incredible and i'm gonna cherish it i think that that really is helpful in accepting yourself if that makes any sense that might have been like really strange let me know if that made sense okay these two kind of go hand in hand this one is positivity during lockdown and how to get out of a rut so I put these hand in hand because I feel like during lockdown I was in a rut. We were in like serious lockdown in America. There are things I wish I had done to help me get out of my rut more. I think that I, I don't think I took quarantine well and I, if I could go back, like I would handle it very differently. So here's my advice on how I think you should handle it if you're going into lockdown or whatever. Cause I know a lot of other places are in lockdown. I would personally, I wish that I had taken more time to take up new hobbies. I think that I would have enjoyed myself a lot more if I had been like on my phone less and doing new hobbies more. The one thing that I did do was I really dove into YouTube and that helped me tremendously and I would count this as a hobby. So definitely that was really helpful. I just wish I had done more of it, you know? Nowadays when I'm in a rut, I try and do stuff like that. And honestly, I think it's about just uber self-care and like if self-care for you looks like watching netflix movies i don't think there's anything wrong with that you don't need to put this pressure on yourself to like you know come up with a freaking the new macbook pro like new like popular world invention or fix world hunger during quarantine or anything like that And self-care, I would say the biggest thing is self-care. And self-care for everybody looks different. For me, self-care means a couple things. It means A, busying myself. Finding things that keep me busy, that give me something to do, that put my mind to work and put my body in motion. So for me, things like that are YouTube. Um, or reorganizing my room. Doing something like yoga or an ab workout. Going for a, a brisk walk with my dog outside in the fresh air. It also means slowing down because I have a tendency to just go, go, go. I think it's the Virgo in me. Like I have a tendency to say yes to every opportunity, overbook myself and just get myself way in over my head. And burnout is a huge Virgo thing. And it's something that I have experienced since high school and just committing to way too much, trying to do way too much and committing to each thing. So I was trying to be really good at each thing. It's a very Virgo quality, but it's something that I've really had to look at because my body would physically get sick. Like I would physically get sick, which is another Virgo thing. Virgo's stress really shows up in their body. And this year, especially like I've developed some anxiety, which I think has always been a thing, but it's really like, you know, kind of shown up physically in my body this year. I've been having a lot of stomach and chest issues. Anxiety has definitely been something I've struggled with this year, as I'm sure a lot of people have, because it's been a, it's been a really hard year. So in addition to doing things that put my mind to work and are fun and exciting and not just on my phone, creative and not on my phone, I also am really trying to allow myself to take breaks and not feel guilty about taking some time to just slow down, sit down, not do any work, not be productive and just relax and like treat myself with that. I've been trying to do that more these past couple weeks after Frankie leaving and it's been really helpful I think. Like I've been doing some self care nights, I've been listening to podcasts and just like taking the time to do those things that sometimes I just get so swept up in feeling like I need to be productive all the time and that I neglect those little things that are really good for your mind and your soul and your body and 
Yeah, but don't just sit there, like do something. Because I feel like just sitting there doesn't really help you get out of any sort of rut. It just kind of keeps you in the rut. You don't have to get up and run a mile and start your own company, but just sitting up, you know, changing out of your pajamas, getting into a comfy area to like watch some Netflix with ramen even. Like that's, that's self care, totally is. And it's, it's valid. Thoughts on California and the film industry there. <laughs> okay, this one's kind of funny. I don't think I'll ever move to California personally. I've lived in New York before and the, sl the California slander in New York is, is real. Like I was very much in tune with like the acting, musical theater, dance, world of New York City while I was there. Never been to California, so I can't I can't judge. I guess I can't judge until I've been to experience myself. But I really don't do well with fake people. People who rub me as fake or who want to be my friend just so they can get something out of it rubs me really the wrong way. So I think from what I've heard about California and LA, that's not something I would enjoy. I definitely want to visit and if I get more into the film industry, like I could see myself, you know, having to travel there, maybe even a couple times a year, maybe even having like, you know, someday, who knows, like a second little small apartment in California. Cause like the things I want to do with my life, like do align with a lot of the stuff that happens in California. Like I'm sure that I will have to go to California at some point, maybe not permanently. I don't know, like if I do get more into acting, like. LA is a really big spot for that in addition to New York and you might have to go there for jobs and stuff like that. So I'm not, you know, adverse to the idea of California. I'm just wary, if that makes sense. I have California at an arm's distance. I don't trust her until she proves herself to me. Um, and the film industry there, I don't know how I feel about it. In my film school, it's very white and male dominated. And I'm in a class with like four other girls. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot I really don't like. It's a lot of mansplaining, a lot of men talking down to you, a lot of the boys in our class getting better opportunities. And I know I would really have to deal with that a lot in California. So in some ways I'm like, okay, it's good practice, but also I wanna avoid <laughs> getting too deep into it. How can you convince your parents to lead a more sustainable lifestyle? That's a really tricky one because people are so ingrained in their own. It's like very hard to change people in that regard, especially people who have like lived their whole life a certain way. So, oh, part of me thinks that it's like honestly just easier sometimes to just kind of wait it out and be like, okay, I'm just gonna wait to move out and I'll implement these sustainable practices. But also, like, just because you're a kid doesn't mean like you're incapable. Parents are busy, like parents do a lot. They have a lot going on, a lot of things they're juggling. So sometimes, like, I think parents could really appreciate if you were to say like, oh mom, like I got this recycling bin for the house or something, I was thinking we could use it. And if they're not into it, then keep a paper bag that you, you know, get at the store one day in your room and recycle your own stuff. Or like, if you want to go vegan, do your own research about your own meals that you make, learn how to cook them yourself so you don't have to like put that on another person. Ask to go with your mom or your dad when they go to the grocery store and pick out some things that you need. But I think the best way to do it is to do the research for your family so they don't feel like it's one more thing being added to their plate and you know try and get everyone excited about it that way how to be confident around guys you like just because i have a, i've had a boyfriend for the past three years doesn't mean i don't remember how to act confident around boys you like i was the flirting master once once long ago um I mean, even with my current boyfriend, I think a big part of why like, we hit it off was because of how confident I was when we first met. I think the biggest thing is literally just be yourself because if you think about it, you don't wanna be with someone who doesn't like you 
for you. And so if you put on this whole front, you try and act like someone you're not. First of all, I think it can be kind of off-putting to another person because it's like kind of obvious when people are trying to make themselves sound like something they're not. And second of all, I think that it's just so much more endearing to just like get to know someone for them and to see someone, you know, have real human struggles, to see someone joke around like they would with their friends with you. Like that's so endearing. So I hope that gives more confidence just knowing that like if you just act like yourself, you're golden. Like literally, if you just act like who you are, that's the best way to be able to form a relationship with this person. I also think confidence, like literally that thing I keep saying about faking it till you make it, it's so important and it's so helpful. Like if literally just, if you don't feel like a very outgoing person and you like feel nervous whenever you're around like the, the boy that you like or the girl that you like, whoever you like, just like tell yourself you're gonna like literally just pretend that you're more outgoing than you are and like go for it. Because the more you just go for it, and like kind of fake it, the more it becomes second nature and it becomes easier for you to actually do that. I know I just told you to be yourself <laughs> um, and I still think you should just be yourself, but if you have a hard time like putting yourself out there or you know, saying hi, I don't think that's not being yourself. I think it's just you challenging yourself to maybe do something that's a little bit hard for you to do. And a strategy to do that is just kind of pretending like you're someone who doesn't have a hard time saying hi to someone, telling a joke, I don't know, like, I don't know if that makes any sense at all. That might be really bad advice. And also realizing that that other person that you're with or that you're talking to, whatever, even if they're acting like they're not nervous at all, they probably are nervous. Like, you're in this together and the more that you just loosen up and take those steps to, you know, be a little bit more outgoing or like stop with all the games like i hate all the games that happen there's no need for all these like oh they text me i need to like wait 10 hours to text them back like you don't need that honestly like yes play a little bit hard to get depending on the person but honestly just becoming friends with that person and treating that person like you would treat any other friend i think is the optimal way to start a relationship with someone. Text them how you would text your friends. Like, you don't need all the weird games. They just make everything more complicated and usually backfire and are just not like endearing or real or you. So yeah, bottom line is just to act like yourself and just to, you know, remember they're a real person. Okay, there are so many other good questions, but I feel like I talked a lot and my makeup's done. How do we like it? I'll show you in better light. Roll the clip. So there are a lot of other questions. You guys asked some really good questions and I'll make sure to do another one of these soon. Maybe we should just do like monthly get ready with me's and we can chit chat and I can talk about things with you. It can be a little series, what do you think? Let me know if you would want that because that could be cute. Also, I low key wanna start a podcast. Let me know your thoughts because that could be really fun and then we could talk about these all the time. Okay, I love you Pixie so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you again, Dossier, for partnering with me. Make sure you check out Dossier down below. You can use my code GG10 for 10% off your Dossier. Like literally, oh my God, pretty. So stunning. And yeah, I love your pixies so much. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.